Welcome back to another Java tutorial where we've got a good one for you. We're going to be going over classes and objects. Now, Java being an object oriented programming language, classes and objects are really the essence of Java. They're what make Java Java. So this video is going to serve as an introduction, but we are going to cover all the basics to get you on your way. If you're already familiar with Java, this will still be a good refresher. I do want to mention that this video is part of a larger Java tutorial playlist that I have. I will link that down in the comments. So if you want to see more Java tutorials, go check that out. So if you have done any Java development, you've actually been using classes this whole time and you might have not even known it. If we take a look here, every Java program has this public class main. So you've actually been writing all your code inside of a class. So you might be asking, what is a class? Well, a class serves as a blueprint to create objects and objects are an instance of a class. If that's confusing, I don't blame you. I think the best way to understand this is by doing an example and explaining it as I go. So let's take a look at some code. All right, so here we have the general form of a class. You're going to have the keyword class saying, hey, this is going to be a class that I want to define. And then you're going to have to give your class a name. And then the body of the class would live in between these two curly braces. Now, there are two things a class can have, either variables or methods. So here we define two variables, which when they're in a class, they're going to be called instance variables. Now, these can be really any variable type, and you can have as many as you want. So the other thing you can have are methods. So here we have an example of two methods and you can have zero or more in a class. So they can be different return types. Uh, they can have zero or more parameters, etc. One thing to mention is that even though it's not enforced or anything by the language, a class should be defined as a single entity. For example, you could have a class called person and it could have something like um, a name or an age but it wouldn't make sense to put something like the weather or something in that class. That's a good way to write messy code and you don't want to do that. So if we go back to our method here, let's go ahead and create a actual class. So I'm using IntelliJ. I'm going to go to file new Java class. And uh, what do we want to do here? Let's, let's do something a little fun here. Let's, uh, let's make a Pokemon class. All right, so here we see a uh, public class Pokemon. And, and for this tutorial, you don't need to worry about what this public is doing. Um, but this is an empty Pokemon class. So let's write our instance variables here. Let's, uh, let's give our Pokemon a name. And let's give it a level. And uh, what kind of method should we give this? Uh, let's write a method that doesn't return anything called attack. And in here, we're just going to print out. We'll say the name and then we'll just say uh, attack. Now that we have this class defined, this class will be a blueprint for creating objects. So how do we declare and initialize objects? Well, first you want to just type the class name, then you want to give your object a name, and then you want to actually create the object itself, which uses the new keyword and the class name. So in our case, how would that look? So we type Pokemon which is the class name, and we have to give our object a name. We'll just call it P1 equals new Pokemon. So for now, uh, don't worry about what this parentheses mean. We're going to get into that. So assignment in Java works from right to left. So what's happening here is first, we're creating this object here. So Java is going into the memory and it's allocating space to create this object. Then it's setting it equal to this Pokemon variable. So now if we ever want to access anything in our Pokemon object, we use this P1. So how do we do that? Let's take a look. So now if we want to set the name and the level for our object, we would do something like P1. And then we would use a period here, which is called the dot operator. So we do dot name. And then we give our Pokemon a name. I feel like for the first one, we got to go with Pikachu. And then we got to give it, give it a level. So it'd be P1 dot level equals, uh, let's just say level 10. Let's go ahead and print that out. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. And we see that it says Pikachu 10, which is what we expected. All right, so now we have one object, but now you can create as many objects as you want. So let's go ahead and create another one. Let's call this one P2. So let's give this one a name and a level. All right, so we have another one. We named it Eevee and we gave it a level of 20. 
And then let's go ahead and call the attack method. So now if we run that, we see that it says EV attack. And here we should actually go and add a space here. So if we run that, we see that it's now properly formatted and it says EV attack. One important thing to note is that these objects have their own set of variables. So P1 gets its own name and its own level. P2 gets its own name and its own level. If we change a variable for P1, it does not affect anything in P2. That's really one of the fundamental principles of objects. It's that variables and methods are encapsulated within the object and changing the variable in one object does not affect the variables in another object. So that's really the basic idea of classes and objects. The class is a blueprint for some kind of edit entity, in this case, Pokemon. And then we use that class to create objects of it, which are have variables and methods defined of from that class. All right, the next thing we're gonna go over are constructors. Sometimes when you create an object, you want some sort of code to happen. Maybe you want some variables to get set initially. That's where constructors come into play. These are special methods that get invoked as soon as an object is created. So if we go back to our Pokemon class, how that's gonna look is it's gonna be its own method. It's not gonna have any return type and it's always gonna be the same name as the class. So in this case, it would just be Pokemon. We have our parentheses and then we have the body here. So say initially when we want a Pokemon to get created, we automatically want every all of them to be set to level one. So what we would do is we would just say level equals one. So now when an object Pokemon is created, this function gets called and the level automatically gets set to one. Let's take a look at an example. So let's go ahead and get rid of pretty much all of this here. And let's go ahead and print out the level. So we see that we're gonna print out p1.level. Now, if we didn't have any constructor, this integer always gets set to zero. But since we have that constructor where we set it to one, we run the code and we see that a one gets printed. Now say we want uh, the user to give us a name and a level. How would we do that? Well, what we could do is we could add another constructor that has parameters. So let's go ahead and do that. And then in the body of the method, we'll just set our actual variables in the class equal to what gets passed in as the parameters. All right, so let's go back to our main function, our main method. Now, when I say method and function, I'm using these interchangeably. In Java, they're called uh, methods. In other languages, they might be called functions, but I'm referring to methods. All right, now let's go ahead and create an object passing in arguments for our constructor. So how that would look like is we would just create an object like we normally would. Now, when we want to pass in variables to our constructor, this is when, remember when I said we we're going to talk about these parentheses later on? Well, this is that time. So the arguments would actually get passed in into these parentheses. And this is what represents the constructor. So let's go ahead and pass in a name and a level. So now this first argument refers back to this string p name and this level 25 refers to this int p level and then our name and our level our instance variables get set to these arguments and uh, and yeah let's go ahead and print this out all right so initially we're just printing out p1.level and then we're going to call p1.attack let's go ahead and run that so we see that they're printed on the same line let's go ahead and give us uh, a new line here so we see p1.level prints out 25, and then p1.attack uh, calls ev attack. So we see that the ev and the 25 get set because we pass these in to the constructor. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is the this keyword. Say for some reason in our constructor, we wanted to call this string name and string level. And then in here, we want to set this name equal to name and level equal to level. Well, you see how this gets kind of weird here because uh, name is the same as our instance variable name and same with level. So which one does it use in here? Well, what it does is, is it always uses the most local variable. So in this case, it would call, it would use the, uh, the arguments that get passed in. So what's happening is name is just getting set back to name. Level is getting set to level. None of these instance variables are being used at all. So how do we get around this? Well, Java has the this keyword. So what we would do is we would just do this dot name and this 
dot level. So whenever you use the this keyword, it's saying use the variables that are actually defined in this class. So this is just an explicit way of telling Java that we want to use these variables. And you could even use this for methods as well. So if we wanted for some reason, we could actually call this dot attack in the constructor. All right, that's going to wrap up this tutorial. Just to recap, we talked about creating classes, uh, creating an object class of that type. We went over constructors to initialize instance variables, as well as passing parameters to constructors. Finally, we wrapped it up by talking about the this keyword. So we went over a ton in this video. We got the basics of classes and objects down, but honestly, we've still only scratched the surface with classes and objects. I plan to do another video, kind of a part two to this, where we go uh, more in depth with what you can really do with classes and objects that are very powerful. So yeah, that video should be coming up. Make sure you guys subscribe to uh, get a notification when that video gets released. Make sure you guys leave a like if you did like the video. And of course, uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. As I mentioned, I do have a Java playlist that you can check out with videos that are continuously being added to it. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.